So we saw how the GMAT is a computer adaptive test, right? Um, what that means is that the test continually assesses and tries to gauge what your, le uh, your ability level is. So it's, it's sort of a dynamic test. It's not a linear test where the questions, where every question that, you go, that you're going to see will be determined by your performance previously. Right? Uh, so in, in other words, it's, extremely, it's going to be extremely rare for two people to have the same set of questions because you know, they, they, they may not perform the same way. Even though the scores might have been the same, they may not have performed the same way. We will see what that means. So if you look at, let me just bring out a pointer. Yikes, OK. Uh, um, if you look at that, if you look at this chart, it starts off with um, a question right, right in the left side. To the left side, uh, you see that there are uh, the, the 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 question starts from a medium or a moderate level, and that's how the each section, verbal and quant, start. They will the the, the system will throw in a question that's of a moderate level, of a median uh, difficulty level, probably a 500 or a, or a 26 in verbal, right? Um, and what it's trying to do is continuously trying to assess what your upper limit is. Now, when you see the first question and you get it wrong, the system realizes that, you know what, maybe this guy does not, is not of the ability level to be able to answer this, this 500 level question. So the next thing that you see is that it drops down um, drops down the difficulty level of that question and as a result right um, and as a result what happens is that the difficulty level of the question you see next is going to be lower and also that affects your score range at that particular point so you're probably now at a 400 level or you know a little higher than that perhaps then you get that question wrong as well. Now the system knows that probably you're not capable of getting that question or getting a question right in that ability level either. So it gives you a slightly, slightly less difficult question. And as a result, your average score also goes down. Um, and then for some reason, maybe the first two questions you zoned out or you were not focused. Um, but then after that, you've been performing really well. Uh, this, the, sec the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth questions were right, and then you sort of become perform in a sort of consistent way where you get most of the questions right after that so although your score level at that point at that last question right there is at a 45 that's probably at a, a 70 percentile level um, your final score though at that point your score range or ability level at that point is probably at a, a 50 or a 60 percentile why? Because it doesn't only consider the question that you have right there, but rather it considers how you've performed throughout the test. So th that's, that's, the, that's the perception, or that's the reason behind the myth that the first few questions are important. Because from the beginning, the test tries to gauge what your ability level is. It tries to understand your upper limit. And therefore, the first few questions, the difficulty level is going to vary quite a bit. You could get to really hard questions really fast if you get all of them right. Or you could get, you know, get to a really low score range if you get most of the first few questions wrong. Um, but as the questions, as the test progresses towards the end, probably towards question number 35 in quant, or probably even question number 31, uh, the system sort of has understood what your ability level is um, it, because it averages out your performance until that point for every question that you've done. And there's only so far that the range can vary. But of course, like I said, um, it's not just about getting the first few questions right. Of course, you want to be getting as many questions right, as many hard questions right as possible. Um, and, and again, if you recognize, if you look at this chart, you realize that, or rather, if you look at this graph, you realize that the score that he got, the ability level that he has, is actually lower than what he is in right now because initially he went to a really low score level and he answered many questions, right? But those questions were of a lower score level than later. So that affects your score as well. You want to be getting to a really high score range, at a, to a really high difficulty range early on in the test. And you want to maintain that uh, without sacrificing time. Because 
if you don't finish the test or if you're not able to manage your time, you, you will realize that it is going to take a hit on your score. So to give you a perspective of that, here's a student who has, um, who's, so, who's in his quant section, and he has performed really, really well up to question number 32, where he has spent a, a bit of time, more than what he should, but he has consistently scored at a 700 plus range. Now that's really good, but the problem is that because he probably ended up spending too much time obsessing about certain questions, he does not have time left for the last five questions. So he just guesses them, gets that wrong. What that does, what consecutive mistakes does, is that it really, really plummets your score. It puts your score really low, and now this is going to affect your average ability level. Right? And he's probably seeing a, um, you know, although his ability level was at about uh, a, um, an 80 percentile at question number 32, now because he guessed and got many of the questions wrong because he didn't have time, his percentile ability level is probably at about, about a 65 or a 70. Um, it can really take a hit on your score. Let's look at another scenario, right, where this guy runs out of time. He's in question number 32 and he's run out of time. What that does is that it does not, it, it, it takes into consideration that you have not solved those questions. You don't even get, you don't even get points or you don't even get um, the ability level of those five questions that you got wrong. Rather you get, technically you get zeros. Uh, that's going to affect your score quite a bit and the system penalizes you for not completing the test. Like I said, for every question that you're not able to complete, you may end up losing up to 5 to 10 percentile in your score for that section. Right? That's a huge hit. So five questions could, could mean that a guy who, should, who was performing at an 80 percentile may end up with a score of about 50 to 60 percentile. Right? Uh, and that's the kind of hit that it can take. So what's the moral of the lesson here? Well, pacing is important. It's not just about getting the first few questions right, but rather managing your time and performing consistently at a high level. And that's important, to be able to perform consistently at a high level. Remember I also told you how getting consecutive questions wrong can really hit your score? Because obviously it's going to take you down to a very low level and then even if you start getting questions right, you're still only getting questions right that are of lower difficulty level. So you're, it really does take a hit on your overall score. But where do students generally make these mistakes? Well, if you think about it, most of these mistakes happen when you look at reading comprehension passages. Right? You look at a passage and you think to yourself, oh my god, I cannot do this. This is not something I want to do right now. I have no idea about this passage. I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to get it right. It, it sort of becomes um, you know, a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts where you um, end up deciding that you're not going to succeed and you, you don't. And as a result, if you get four questions wrong consecutively, and also the fact that you performed really well on, that, on those questions is going to take a hit on your morale and it's going to affect your test after that as well. Um, so again, you, you realize it's not really about content. I've not spoken about content yet. It's mostly about your composure and how you're able to manage time and stress. So if you're in that, in that situation where you get four questions wrong or you disengage from the passage and you, you know, sort of quit on it, that's going to affect your score substantially. It's going to affect you quite a bit. So what do you do? Well, understand that reading comprehension is not really um, a task where you have to know content or have previous knowledge about the topic. Rather, it's about understanding patterns and structures. Again, I will talk more about this. In fact, I will um, have a separate session about this soon. So stay tuned if you have not already subscribed to the channel. And as we have more strategy sessions, you will be the first ones to be notified about it.